Hi, Pretentious Writer here. Let's talk succession. Best show on TV right now, third season just ended, I had a blast. And if for some reason you haven't watched it, please fix that. If well-realized family drama with a fast plot, a spice of business lingo and a shitload of the most creative cursing I've ever seen in my life sounds like your jam, give it a try, you will not regret it. But here's the gist of this video. I want to focus on something else. My original plan was to do a video on succession as a whole, but there's so many great videos analyzing and breaking down this show already that it felt like mine would be just another one in a million. Cut to a few days ago and this season's finale breaks the internet. I fucking win. Now, listen, I don't know what your opinion on this third season as a whole is, but I believe I'm not far off the mark by saying it has been polarizing. A lot of people claim that this season dragged and it felt aimless at times, while others like myself actually enjoyed the different structure it had. One thing, however, is unanimous. The season finale is easily one of the best things in the entire show, period. And fuck yeah, I wanna talk about it. Let's do it. The third season's final episode, All the Bells Say, was written by the creator of the show himself, Jesse Armstrong, and directed by Mark Millot, who has also helmed the overwhelming majority of Succession's episodes. And before I go into the meat of it, I want to briefly mention the bigger plot of the season. I promise I'll keep it brief, but just trust me, this is important for later in the video. So the overarching conflict is Kendall vs Logan, as he threw his dad under the bus and wants to sink him while also saving the company. But it gets increasingly clear as the season goes on that Kendall has jack shit on Logan or Waystar and is just coasting through his 15 minutes of fame being part playboy douchebag, part conflicted man who deeply wants to believe he's a changed, redeemed person. He falls down from grace pretty heavily, culminating in that bad shit cliffhanger from the previous episode. Meanwhile, she spends the whole season seeing that daddy's promises are kinda not that real and she's getting cut off left and right. To make matters worse, her and Tom's marriage plummets as she barely cares about the risk of him going to prison all while he's going on a downward spiral before rebounding from that but still feeling like dog's ass when he realizes along the way that huh, I am in a shitty marriage. Roman, on the other hand, manages to taste success, gets on his dad's goodwill and the power climbs to his head. And then it all comes crashing down in the final two episodes as he fucks things up and also sees that no, that he actually does not trust him that well. With all that set up, we get to the finale. The first thing that I imagined would happen, and I'm glad it did, was just straight up revealing Ken's fate. No, he's not dead, and this accident is what allows the siblings to slowly approach each other again. They try an intervention, which takes a pretty wild turn as Connor is the one who ends up bursting out. I was actually surprised it took that long for him to lash out at them, and I love how Alan Ruck balances this genuine resentment with what I would call very entitled and pathetic energy. Connor is at a low point, I get that, but all of his problems sound so petty and silly. Yeah, he also speaks true when he calls out his siblings for the way they've always disregarded him. I'm curious to see where they're gonna take the character, especially when a scene later he gains some morale as Willa ends up accepting his proposal and my god, their marriage already sounds like the most juicy, hilarious shit show. I cannot wait to see what they have in store for us. But we switch gears as the wedding goes on and Roman, already cut out from the negotiations with Gojo, is insecure about what's going on. In what feels like a boiling pot and a surprisingly tense sequence, he and Shiv start sniffing around and find out that their father is probably gonna sell the company. They drag Kendall to discuss their next steps and we get to the scene. Okay, where can I start? So there are TV shows that would consider themselves blessed to have a scene like this in its roster. A moment that just encapsulates the character's dynamics, develops them, and manages to be funny, emotional, and cathartic all at the same time. Yet this episode has not one, but two. The second one I'm gonna mention in a while, but this is the first and big one. For starters, I love how the change of tone happens. Ken is completely tuned out, and both Shiv and Roman are in such a paranoia that they start suspecting him. 
Maybe he has something in this deal, maybe he's trying to sink the ship, yada yada. But it's as the conversation goes along that they realize that nope, their brother is really in a bad place. And then comes that reveal. I killed a kid. Hmm? What? What? What is so shocking to me is that the show, up until this point, had kind of programmed us, the audience, to believe that this subject, about Kendall killing that waiter, would always be a big no-no to everyone else, especially his family. Carolyn shuts him off when he tried talking about it, and he almost spills the beans to Shiv last season, but holds back. Because they can't be trusted, because they don't give a damn, and a lot of events this season reinforce this idea. But it's not what happens. Both Shiv and Roman comfort him. It's awkward, weird, and slightly fucked up, but they are trying. The way the dialogue progresses is just masterful. It feels surprising but completely in character. And as I saw Roman on the ground with Ken, cracking very uncomfortable jokes about how he suffered more that night because he couldn't get a drink, I honestly felt... relieved. And I feel awful for saying this because it's the death of an innocent man they're discussing and Roman is joking about. But I was so caught up in the emotions of the particular scene and this character's journey that the way they welcomed these news was like breathing a sigh of relief. I feared what would they say, what would they do with it, but this moment made me realize that throughout all the sniping, all the backstabbing, all the screaming with each other, they do have a limit, they do have a line, and in their own flawed and strange ways, the three siblings have each other's backs. And not only the writing, but the acting and directing as well. A lot has been said about the framing and that beautiful shot that is probably an all-timer in TV history by now, but if we rewind back a bit, we see that even the staging of the actors tells a story. And credit where credit is due, an article from Vox pointed that to me, I'll leave the link in the description. But if you pay attention to the dynamics in this scene, every time either Shiv or Roman approaches Kendall and gets to his level, is when they're really acknowledging his dark state of mind. In the beginning, it's Shiv who's comforting him, while Roman stands. As the scene goes on, he starts to approach Kendall both physically and emotionally, until he finally sits down, and it's his turn to comfort him being also the first moment where his jokes land and Kendall laughs. Meanwhile, Shiv answers the call to hear about the deal and... Guess what? She stands up and moves to the background, because the deal is not the focus of this moment anymore. And then it culminates with the aforementioned shot. It's beautiful and also sad, all in the details as Shiv quickly wipes a tear and they move on, because their upbringing has made it so hard for them to show emotions to each other, with the exception of Kendall, who is dealing with the darkness inside him, yet finally being able to talk about it with his family. With the cherry on top being when he asks one simple, gut-wrenching question. Uh, can I, can I be with you guys? Yes, yes. Okay. Man, this scene is a roller coaster, But it provides such an organic moment to bring the siblings together and finally have them working towards a single objective. Sync the deal that daddy is concocting. As they start planning it out on their way to Logan, the tone switches again and the tension becomes absurd, because Roman is shitting himself, it might be the first time he stands up to his dad, and I'm wondering, is he gonna pull back at the 11th hour like he did back in season 1? Is something gonna go wrong since this is Logan we're talking about? It's so crazy when you stop to think about it, the reason why Tom's line earlier this season about how he's never seen Logan get fucked hits so hard, and I think it's because the show has manipulated us to believe that as well. So much that when we are seeing a legitimate coup about to happen, something that you believe could be the sword that finally decapitates King Lear, you question it and like Roman, you feel a pit in your stomach because Logan always wins. But back to the plot itself. In between calls you have Tom hearing about the situation from Shiv and then alerting Greg of it. It's a really funny moment that breaks a bit of the tension, the calm before the storm. And even then there's a lot being said on this moment, but we'll come back to it. So the siblings get into the war room and Logan's there, chilling. I love how they try to talk business and he immediately gets defensive with Ken's presence, but when Roman and Shiv don't even blink, you can see the gears turning in his head and he's starting to notice something's amiss. He tries once again to play with Roman's strings, but this time he fails, giving in to a mix of anger and disappointment as he realizes his children are really turning their backs on him, culminating with his explosion. I read somewhere someone say that they noticed from this scene that when it comes to being childish, Roman might have learned this from his father because you notice how he almost goes into a child tantrum of sorts when Shiv tries to argue with him. It's ridiculous and immature but it also manages to be fucking scary at the same time. So much of a giant Logan is. 
And the more you rewatch this scene, the more you pick up on little nuances and details. Like Logan's annoyed look, slowly realizing that he would not be able to control Roman this time. The way the siblings react to his outburst by trembling a bit. How Kendo is the only one who's immovable and resolute throughout all the slaughter. Because he's like, been there, done that. He's experienced his father's worst, so none of his antics face him anymore. How Roman appeals to parental love as a last resort, showing that yes, behind all that slimy, douchebaggy persona, he's surprisingly emotional when it comes to family. And because the show is so stupidly good at callbacks, we remember that last season's finale when he had this heart-to-heart -heart with his siblings, asking if one day they'll be able to talk about emotions. Also, Carolyn's betrayal, how hard it hits, because an episode before that she's talking about how Logan was so evil to her, and yet there she is making a deal with the devil. We also have the amazing shot between Roman and Kendall that parallels the other one 10 minutes before, and finally, how Shiv takes a breather to not break when she realizes she just got backstabbed, a million emotions going through her face as Tom kisses her head. Oh god, we still have to talk about Tom. How much good there is in that revelation? Well, let's see. First and obvious one, it recontextualizes his entire conversation with Greg that happened minutes before. So much that almost feels obvious in retrospect, with him talking about making a deal with the devil and etc. But most importantly, this is the culmination of his entire arc this season. Is Tom accepting that he's stuck in a super crappy marriage, realizing that falling into Logan's good graces is definitely the way to go, even if it means betraying his own wife? And the thing that drives me mad is that it was all in our faces all along. Back in the cafeteria, when Tom plainly tells Kendall that he's never seen Logan lose, not once. Back in the investors meeting when he's the only one taking care of Logan while the man is losing his fucking mind on a UTI. Back in the beginning of the season where he offers to take the fall for Logan if worse comes to pass. Because once again, he knows that Logan fucking wins. And Tom has won as well. To which extent, we'll discover next season. And with this last twist, we cap off what was an intense, personal, involving hour of television. As I said, the best episode of the year for me and there was a lot of stuff I really enjoyed this year. But when putting everything on a scale, it's hard to face off against what Jesse Armstrong and his cast and crew created here. A masterclass of writing, directing and acting that pulled no punches and dared to surprise us and subvert our expectations, while simultaneously landing all characters where they should be. The fact that we look at everyone's arcs this season, check the finale again and go, but of course, is just a testament to how much great control the writers of the show have over it. I finished that episode ecstatic and satisfied, but also wanting season 4 immediately. And that, my friends, says everything, at least I think so. But what about you? Are you a Succession fan? Do you agree with my assessment? Or do you have any other show with a better episode than this one? As always, let me know in the comments, and this is The Pretentious Writer, see you next time.